Every time one of these games gets an update, the community tries to figure out everything that's been changed. In a lot of cases, we'll get a general understanding of what's different, we'll usually be told if a certain glitch was fixed, or what items go through balancing changes, but what interests me most is the stuff that doesn't get mentioned at all. There's almost always a line in the patch notes that says something like other bug fixes, and some pretty surprising stuff gets dumped in there. I recently made an entire video about how the map has been secretly changing along the way, but of course a bunch of other stuff has been altered as well. So join me today in examining 10 more unmentioned changes hidden in the Elden Ring updates. Number 10. The removed branches outside of Celia. Outside the exit of Celia Crystal Tunnel, we used to have these branches near the outer wall of Celia Town. These were removed in Patch 103, and it's kind of a bummer as far as visual changes go. There's now less detail here, and I think making a change to the environment like this is kind of unprecedented. I can think of one elevator shaft in Bloodborne that was made to appear deeper, to not trick players into thinking they could drop down into it, but that's pretty much it. The reason for removing these is that they provided an unintentional skip that allowed you to get behind the town faster. I would have preferred for them to have just put up some invisible walls, it's not like they're shy about doing that in other places to help prevent some unintended movements, but I think their reason for removing them entirely wasn't just to block the skip. I think they didn't want players wasting their time trying to jump around on the branches, and an invisible wall alone wouldn't have fixed that. But the funny part is that other skips are still available, and I'll link to a demonstration of that below. Number 9, Moog's Tombstone Cheese. A smaller alteration was also made outside Moog's boss room. These tombstones used to be closer to this ledge, allowing you to get inside Moog's room without passing through the fog gate. But Patch 103 moved them a bit further back, removing that as an option. The reason the devs didn't want this is that it's not uncommon for bosses in these games to only have their AI trigger if you pass through the intended entrance. This previously worked on Moog, having allowed you to cheese him since he wouldn't fight back at all. Number 8, the Dark Souls chest removal. Now, one of the strangest alterations that comes to mind is how they've been handling the chest from Dark Souls. They recycled this design that dates back to Dark Souls 1, and the first time I saw one of these I wasn't sure if it was meant to be an intentional easter egg, or if they were just reusing an existing asset to simply have another chest they could use. But now I'm not so sure what the intention was, because they actually removed this one from the Road's End Catacombs. The removal suggests that their inclusion in Elden Ring might have been a mistake, and that they were probably just placeholders they forgot to swap out. However, there's still at least three that weren't removed in Patch 103, and all of these that were brought to my attention weren't changed in Patch 104 either. The ones that still remain can be found in the Perfumer's Ruins, the War Dead Catacombs, and the Highway Lookout Tower of Altus Plateau. If you know of any others that can still be found after the most recent patch, please leave a comment below. If these all were in fact a mistake, I'd be okay with removing most of these in a future patch, but I also hope they'd keep at least one for the fun of it. I know these made a lot of players worried that it was going to be a mimic, which is pretty funny. Number 7. Box Easier Discovery Patch 103 fixed a lot of NPC quest lines, but something a bit tangential to that was how much easier they made finding Bach. They added an arterial leaf in the form of a purple shiny that helps lure you towards him. But in addition to that, they dramatically increased the radius in which he starts calling out to you. You used to have to get very close, and here's a demonstration of that. Uh, Oi! You, you there! Could you help us out, Cully? Now he starts calling out from way out over here, making him a lot harder to miss. I do think the original was too restrictive, but I also feel like they went a bit overboard. It makes the placement of the new item a bit redundant if you don't actually have to step out towards it from the road. Oi. And one problem when you're notified from much further away is that it can make it harder to pinpoint what you're looking for. Here's a comparison of the approach to Bach from the opposite direction. While I think making the radius a bit smaller again would be an improvement, how it is today is a lot better than the tiny radius of the unpatched version. Number 6. 
Dangerous Spirit Springs. Now you've probably heard me talk about these at length already if you've seen my fall damage videos, but the quick recap here on the Spirit Springs is that there used to be six specific ones that were a lot less safe to jump down to than others. This is because the area in which it was safe to land is much narrower for them, and this applied to all three from Kaelid and all three underground. A lot of you were suspected it was just an issue of not passing through their center closely enough to get a safe landing buff, but trust me when I say that this really isn't the cause. There actually is a huge discrepancy in their behavior compared to other spirit springs, which normally grant a safe landing from much further away. They fixed all three from Kaelid in patch 103, which should help prevent a lot of unnecessary deaths. And one change that helps distinguish this, if you wanted to try testing this without risking death, is to just jump around on the ground near them. For all spirit springs that work normally, you'll see a heavy landing effect get applied in the area that's safe to land. So we can see how this used to not happen before the patch in Kaelid, and how they've been changed to work like the rest. However, they seem to have forgotten about the three remaining ones, which are found in Shifra River and the Deep Root Depths. These didn't get fixed with the Kaelid ones in 103, and now that 104 is out, that hasn't changed them either. But if anything gets changed in a future patch, I'll mention that in a pinned comment below. Number 5. The Impaler's Catacombs Killbox. Just one more thing to bring up from the previous videos again, some places with improperly placed killboxes have been fixed, like this pit in the Impaler's Catacombs. Dropping down here allowed you to survive, despite triggering the death cam, because it was just a hair underneath 20 meters, not allowing the fall damage mechanics to make it lethal. You could quit and reload to fix the camera, but wandering around down here would have you stepping into a killbox eventually. Patch 103 corrected this by having the killbox properly cover the entire pit. But before the correction, it was possible to see messages left by other players down there. This was problematic because it would trick others into thinking there was a reason to go down there. And if you survived long enough, your runes would wind up down there as well. Number 4. The 9999 HP Illusory Wall. In the Volcano Manor, we used to have a unique type of illusory wall that took a ton of hits to break. I might have more to say about the breakable objects of Elden Ring in the future, but for now I just wanted to mention how this was patched to be completely unbreakable in patch 104, which confirms that its inclusion was a mistake. I'll link to a video below by Zuli the Witch that goes into some more detail, but I did want to show something kind of funny about it while we're at it. Before its exact HP was known, a lot of people were referring to this as a wall that takes 50 hits to break, but that number was never exact, and it was quickly realized that different weapons' attacks would require varying amounts of hits. The reason for this has a pretty strange history across the Souls games, and we can see what happens if we slow our animation speed way down. We can break it in a single hit. This is because an object's HP will drain depending on the duration of contact. Something like the active frames of a hitbox touching it lowers its HP over time. But it wasn't always this way. In Demon Souls, there were some objects in the Dragon Gods arena that took multiple hits to break, and those always lost a consistent amount of HP depending on your attack. Moving into Dark Souls 1, something apparently got glitched along the way because this was no longer the case. This is when active frames of your attack started continuously draining object HP, and I believe this actually affected the game's design, in a subtle way. Note that there's nowhere in Dark Souls 1 where any object takes more than one hit to break, even when it would make sense. I think what happened is that they felt uncomfortable with how it became glitchy, so they just gave pretty much everything one HP, so it was more of a binary thing. If you were capable of breaking something, it was going to happen in a single hit. I don't think anyone knows why this happened. My favorite speculation is that something broke with Havoc Engine middleware, so it might be something from software isn't familiar with. At some point they stopped worrying about this newer, glitchy system, as they did put multiple hit objects back into a few select locations, like these breakable chests in Bloodborne. At the end of the day, who really cares if anyone notices that these chests break inconsistently? But I just find it funny that we can see this glitch carrying all the way through to Elden Ring. Number 3. The Old Altus Trolls. So there were a lot of enemies that have been tweaked, but I do think it's worth mentioning some enemies that have changed beyond some minor balancing fixes. There used to be a couple trolls outside the Old Altus Tunnel that had incredibly low health. Killing them was pretty much a guaranteed one-shot, as they only had 39 HP. And they also didn't drop any runes. This was fixed in patch 103, but in the process it also removed the hooded cloak they were wearing, and I was surprised by the change in appearance. I was notified by King Boar that the reason for all of this is that they originally set an NPC param of zero. Basically, we just had a situation where the correct values and behaviors weren't being referenced, explaining the broken stats and the broken AI. 
but this also apparently explains their clothes being taken away, as model masks were failing to be implemented correctly as a result as well. So it's not actually an entirely different version of the enemy that's being loaded now, the hood was just part of the parameters. Number 2, the Falling Star Beast. In patch 103, we had a significant debuff to the Falling Star Beast in Celia Crystal Tunnel. It used to appear and behave like the full-grown variant, meaning it used to have an eye and a second, more difficult phase. But now it's the eyeless version that it should be. I think this was a welcome change for a lot of players, having originally been a much tougher fight. It's worth noting that despite having been the full-grown variant previously, that this difference was never reflected correctly in the boss's name. That aspect hasn't changed. So the patch almost certainly wasn't a concession for player complaints, it was likely changed to make the fight into what it was always intended to be. Number 1. Group Boss Fights At number 1 here, we actually have something that has a pretty major impact on the gameplay. In patch 104, several of the duo and trio boss fights have been altered to be a lot more forgiving. Now this doesn't apply to all of them, so for now you'll still have to suffer through the gargoyles. But what happened is that two specific things have changed, which was discovered by King Boar when reviewing their AI. Several bosses have had their AI modified so that they're less aggressive when they're not the primary attacker. And new flags were also added to their AI that altered something called Team Effectivity, which reduces the number of enemies that are allowed to be considered a primary attacker in the first place. This is all to say that there's now two layers of further protection that results in a lot more standing back or strafing around from whoever's not attacking you at the moment. Both changes were applied to the Crystallians, the Mad Pumpkin Heads, and the Abductor Virgins. They used to be a lot more aggressive with attacking simultaneously. There's also a couple bosses who didn't get both of those changes to their AI, but still got at least one of them. So this results in the Erdtree Avatars and Crucible Knights being more relaxed as well. This is honestly a pretty huge change from Patch 104 that I don't think got enough recognition. If the patch notes said that all of these bosses were nerfed, there probably would have been a lot more discourse about it. But since it wasn't mentioned, I think there's a lot of players who have no idea this happened. I can't stress enough how big of a difference this makes. I know some people are going to complain about how this makes the game easier, but I honestly think this makes the fights a lot more fun. I'm not someone who would ever suggest that you shouldn't use all the tools the game gives you, but if you are someone who does try to solo your boss fights, these are just far less of a slog now. If you're somewhat competent at backstab fishing Crystallians or parrying Crucible Knights, I think these encounters are a lot more enjoyable than they used to be. And okay, so I lied. Even though I said stat tweaking wasn't of interest, here's a bonus example of another enemy nerf, the Merciless Chariot. Their base damage was halved, reduced from 999 to 500. Now my math might be wrong, but 20 ain't better than 25, sure as I can bet my cousin on it, I tell you what, oh fuck. Wait, I didn't get one shot by one of those? So yeah, while they're still pretty dangerous, they're not as likely to one shot you. Of course, this isn't all of the changes that have happened, so I might consider doing more of these in the future. Also realize people might want more information about the listed patch notes as well, since those lack details on the exact numbers involved, so I've linked to a few data mined resources below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider doing all the stuff on YouTube that helps. You can also support me on patreon.com slash illusorywall. I've also started a TikTok account, so consider giving that a follow if you use it. I'll be posting more short-form content there occasionally, where the idea is to offer something different from my deep dives. I'm posting Soulsborne trivia and videos that are under a minute in length, edited for mobile browsing. Special thanks to all of my backers at the Evil Vagrant tier, and I've got more proper mechanics breakdowns planned for Elden Ring soon, and I hope you're looking forward to them. Thanks again for watching.